This video is brought to you by the Roll for Combat Actual Play Podcast and their new Agents of Edgewatch adventure, and by the Deck of Many in their Big Bad Booklet series. And finally, by the RPG Writer Workshop. Learn how to write and publish your own adventure today, just like we did at RPGWriterWorkshop.com. Hello and welcome back to The Gallant Goblin. Today we have our full case review of Fangs and Talons, the latest pre-painted mini set for Dungeons and Dragons from WizKids Games. Many thanks to them for sending us this case to review with you. Fangs and Talons is set to release to stores on November 11th, 2020. It doesn't support any specific adventure, but aims to fill out those ranks of potential allies and enemies from the Monster Manual, from Volo's Guide, and Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes. It features quite a few long requests minis, as well as several fun surprises like the Flail Snail. If you want more information about how the WizKids booster box system works, check out our explainer on our website at the link in the video description below. And before we dive in, I want you to know about our own 5e supplement series called Fight Your Minis. We take a new mini for each booklet and give you everything you need to know to get the most out of it with new stat blocks, story hooks, encounters, NPCs, custom art, magic items, layer maps, and more. Our first booklet is all about the snowy owlbear. So pick it up today at gallantgoblin.com slash snowy owlbear. We're also doing a new giveaway associated with this video. You can win a booster box of Fangs and Talons. All you've got to do is be a subscriber to our channel and leave us a comment down below telling us which mini in this set you'd like us to see featured in our Fight Your Mini supplement series. So just be subscribed and leave that comment down below. For now, lean back, relax, keep your arms and legs and fangs and talons inside the vehicle at all times, and let's learn more about our new minis. The Goliath Fighter is one of the few new player character minis included in this set. Goliaths seem to be making a resurgence in our recent mini sets from WizKids. Goliaths are native to the spine of the world and make great PC options for your Icewind Dale Rime of the Frost Maiden adventures. All the information you need to make a Goliath character is in the Icewind Dale adventure book, or you can get the information for free in the Elemental Evil Players Companion, linked in the video description down below. The Cobalt Inventor is one of my absolute favorite creatures. They're crafty collectors who have more weapons than just about any other monster in all of D&D. Though most of their weapons can only be used once. They may sling a vial of acid, or release their pet skunk to incapacitate their foe, or throw their basket of centipedes at your head. For the two minis we have here, the common variety comes armed with a scorpion on a stick, and the uncommon variant has a rot grub pot. Those are just a few of the Cobalt Inventor's tricks. All of these epic abilities add up to a CR one quarter stat block in Volo's Guide. These little evil fellas are awakened plants who can pull up their roots to move around and scout out campsites or watering holes where they can spring a surprise attack on any wary travelers nearby. They aren't so dangerous on their own, but in a large group they can overwhelm an unprepared party. Though perceptive foes may notice that their dry, brittle nature makes them susceptible to fire. They have a CR 1 8 stat block in the basic rules and appear in Lost Minds of Fandelver, Rick and Morty, the Sunless Citadel, Curse of Strahd, Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, Dragon of Ice Spire Peak, and Tales from the Yawning Portal. These little, timid, horned fey rabbits were brought to Cholt long ago by merchants from Zakara, a giant peninsula southeast of Faerun. They're also common to see if you visit the Feywild. They are a fine choice for a find familiar spell, and they have a CR0 stat block in Tomb of Annihilation. Another fey creature, Boggles are the boogeymen of fairy tales, the monsters hiding under the child's bed or in the closet, ready to spring out and frighten. They are born near those areas where the material plane brushes up against the fey wild, from the feelings of someone who is very lonely or feels abandoned. They don't really aim to kill or hurt, merely to tease, prank, and cause general mischief. Also, I think this mini might be dabbing. Boggles have a CR 1 8 stat block in Volo's Guide. A Boggle appears in Infernal War Machine Rebuild and in Acquisitions Incorporated, because of course it does. I think this is an amazing looking mini. 
Animated armor is a classic D&D creature. When a mage needs a guard he or she doesn't have to pay a salary to, he casts a spell on his showpiece set of armor, bringing it to life to serve as a sentry. They can even be given scripted speeches to give warnings or demand passwords or deliver riddles as if this were some sort of game. Animated armor has a CR1 stat block in the basic rules. Animated armor appears in many adventures, including Explorer's Guide to Wildmount, Curse of Strahd, and Rise of Tiamat. The Skeletal Alchemist may be new to you. It was new to me. It was introduced in the sinister secret of Saltmarsh and is, in fact, the animated skeletal remains of an alchemist, often in the employ of a necromancer, working in dark laboratories surrounded by dangerous chemicals like vials of bubbling acid, burning alchemist fires, and cans of Mountain Dew. Their CR one half stat block is in Ghosts of Saltmarsh. So, I looked up wolf spiders for you, and well, I'm just going to read you the first line of a story from the Washington Post. You're enjoying dinner with your family when a spider the size of a half dollar races across the floor and under the table. Even more terrifying, you wake in the middle of the night to find a large, hairy spider sharing your bed. Worse yet, it's resting on your neck. So, yeah, imagine that, only, you know, giant. Grady is never editing another one of these videos. Giant wolf spiders have a CR of 1 million. Oh, wait, no. Uh, one quarter and have a stat block in the basic rules. Lizard folk are territorial xenophobic humanoids who typically live in swamps and jungles, rarely interacting with anyone in the outside world. They don't have a traditional understanding of morality, instead killing when necessary and without hesitation or regret, and then just doing what they have to to survive. They were made playable in Volo's Guide to Monsters. This creature always makes me think of the old, obscure DC superhero Ambush Bug. While the Ambush Drake can't teleport to anywhere in the multiverse, it can use its high dexterity to get the drop on, or ambush, its prey. And if it catches them in a surprise round, it can deal extra damage with its bite. Its CR one half stat block is in Horde of the Dragon Queen and Rise of Tiamat. I'm so glad we got a mule mini, and I think it's going to hit my table a lot. We need more common animals like dogs, cats, deer, and horses. Interestingly, while a riding horse is considered a large creature by D&D rules, the mule is in fact a medium, though with its beast of burden ability, it's considered large for the purposes of carrying capacity. The mule has a CR 1 8th stat block in the basic rules. There's also information about them as equipment in the player's guide, where a mule will run you eight gold pieces. Skulks are all that remain of travelers who get lost in the Shadowfell, soulless shells who remain permanently invisible unless seen in a mirror or through the use of a special candle. Otherwise, children are the only ones who can see them. Skulks are sometimes summoned through dark rituals where they take on a bit of the identity of the person who summoned them and then carry out their commands with as much violence and bloodshed as possible. They have a CR1 half stat block in the basic rules. These swamp thing looking creatures are evil plant monsters who live in the forest and animate all the plants around them to bind up their potential prey before going in for the kill. The Vine Blight appears in Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica and Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. They also have a strong presence in Curse of Strahd, where they have a dark connection to the Golthias tree. The Vine Blight has a CR1 half stat block in the Monster Manual. Very interesting player character mini choice here. Like the Goliath, the Genasi were introduced in the Elemental Evil Player's Companion, where the art for this mini originated. The Genasi are the offspring of mortals and genies from the Elemental Planes. You can choose to be an air, earth, water, or fire Genasi. The fire Genasi are particularly intelligent, resistant to fire, and able to produce flame at will. This is such a great player character mini. When I first picked this one up, I realized that a lot of the regular minis in this set just felt more substantial than some of the old minis used to. This one has so much detail in the face and the clothing. There's writing and even a sketch of a fireball in a spell book. And of course, a cool spell effect on his staff. Though, it kind of looks to me like it might actually be a spell scroll that's creating the effect there. What do you think?
The Gloomweaver is a formidable foe to throw against a party. They are Shadarkai dark elves, attuned to the Shadowfell, and can lurk in the shadows and bring a party to their knees from a distance, with a combination of their dark aura that imposes disadvantage on saves, and their powerful warlock spells like Witch Bolt, Major Image, Darkness, and Blight. The Gloomweaver has a CR 9 stat block in Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes. Burbalangs live in the astral plane where they lurk amongst the remains of dead gods, gathering bones to summon the spirits of the dead whom they force to divulge all their secrets, which they then carve into the bones themselves. They accumulate a vast wealth of knowledge and so are the target of powerful beings who want to tap into that knowledge, though if you want access to it, you better bring them a tasty secret or the bones of a particularly choice being or you'll walk away empty-handed. The Burbalang has a CR2 stat block in Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes. We've got a few great deep cuts minis in this set, and if you're planning to run Dead and Thay from Tales from the Yawning Portal, you'll be glad to get your hands on this mini. Dead and Thay has its bones in the D&D 5e playtest way back in 2014. It's an epic dungeon crawl for 9th level characters who should hit 11th level by the end of it. The Thayan apprentice here is a 4th level caster with wizard spells and a CR2 stat block in Dead and Thay. It's a mimic! It's a door! What else do you need to know? On one side you have an innocuous looking wooden door that looks like it would fit right in in a dungeon or in a carved out cavern. On the other side you have a creature that wants to eat your face. This is a hefty, heavy, medium sized mini. The mimic has a CR2 stat block in the basic rules. Speaking of Dead and Thay, another creature you may come across in that adventure, or anywhere with re-dead vampires, is Vampiric Mist. All that's left when you kill a vampire and deny it access to a place to rest and recover. The Vampiric Mist can descend on a creature and drain the blood from them, healing itself. Though, as you might imagine, it is sensitive to sunlight. It has a CR3 stat block in Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes. It appears in Out of the Abyss and Dead and Thay. We have a few ghostly minis in this set, and if you're like me, it's difficult to remember how all the undead ghost-like creatures in D&D differ from one another. Well, the Banshee is, according to the lore, a beautiful undead elf who use their beauty to manipulate others. You might associate the term Banshee with shrieking and wailing, and indeed, the D&D Banshee can let loose a cry that will instantly bring someone to zero hit points if they fail their save. It can be quite a shock to an adventuring party. The the Banshee has a CR4 stat block in the basic rules. A Banshee appears in The Lost Mines of Thandelver, Dragon of Ice Spire Peak, and Icewind Dale Rime of the Frost Maiden. We're getting quite the collection of kobolds in this set, and at the end of this video I'll show you all of them together. Sometimes a kobold shows an innate arcane talent. These sorcerer kobolds become highly prized members of their warren. They're third level casters with spells like Scorching Ray, Chromatic Orb, and Charm Person. They also have sorcery points to heighten spells or cast them without using somatic or verbal components. A kobold scale sorcerer has a CR1 stat block in Volo's Guide. Our next four minis are painted versions of elementals whose sculpts first appeared in Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures. I don't have the Nolzer's Water Elemental mini, but this one appears to be a slightly altered sculpt. Elementals on their own plane of existence are just happy cruising along and enjoying the scenery, but they're often summoned to the material plane and bound to their summoner, which they hate. But the magic compels them. A water elemental has a CR5 stat block in the basic rules. The Earth Elemental Mini has the same basic shape as an older's Mini, but in a different pose. An Earth Elemental is a walking mess of rock, stone, mud, and sometimes metal or gemstones. They can stream through the earth like a fish glides through the water and can slam their mighty appendages down on their foes or, even more effectively, onto objects and structures. Being made of dirt, they have quite a few resistances and immunities. They also have a CR5 stat block in the basic rules. 
The Air Elemental Mini and the Fire Elemental Mini I'll be discussing next appear to be the same sculpts as the Nolzer's unpainted figures. Fighting an Air Elemental is like trying to punch a tornado to death. Luckily, magical items in D&D are pretty powerful, so swinging a magic sword or shooting a magical arrow at one does actually hurt it. Not so much lightning and thunder, though. If you want to be particularly mean to your players, have an air elemental attack them on a cliffside or along a rickety bridge, as they can sling a player in a random direction with their whirlwind ability. The air elemental has a CR5 stat block and, you guessed it, the basic rules. Finally, our fire elemental. They just love to burn anything and everything. Like most elementals, they're immune to most conditions. You're not going to grapple, petrify, or poison fire. You're not going to knock it prone or restrain it with ropes. However, it is susceptible to water, though you'll need a lot of it to put a fire elemental out. To be precise, 102 gallons. The fire elemental has a CR5 stat block in the basic rules. Each elemental realm has its own genie, and the Merid is the genie of the elemental plane of water. They're haughty and proud, living in great coral fortresses. A Merid appears in Dungeon of the Mad Mage, an explorer's guide to Wildmount. They also appear in random encounter tables in Xanathar's Guide and Ghosts of Saltmarsh. And they can serve as a genie patron for a warlock, though the genie patron is currently unearthed arcana playtest material that will be included in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. It has a CR 11 stat block in the monster manual. This is one impressive mini, and since it's an uncommon in this set, you're likely to get a couple of them if you buy a brick or more. I ended up with four out of the case. According to the D&D Beyond Encounter Builder, Four T-Rexes should be a deadly challenge to a group of four 16th level characters, and they don't have a complicated stat block. Being huge beasts, they're fairly easy to hit too. They can just dish out quite a lot of damage, especially if it gets you in its mouth. The Tyrannosaurus Rex has a CR 8 stat block in the basic rules. One appears in Tomb of Annihilation and in random encounter tables in Xanathar's Guide. Yuan Ti are always trying to ascend closer and closer to godhood through usually dark and violent rituals. When a Yuan Ti abomination, which is already quite powerful, takes that next step, they become the six headed Yuan Ti anathema, the pinnacle of the serpentine form. The Yuan Ti anathema has a CR 12 stat block in Volo's Guide. They don't officially appear in any adventures yet, but you should be able to fit one right in in Tomb of Annihilation. Trolls are unique in their powerful innate regeneration abilities that can only be stopped by fire or acid. Nothing else can really kill them, which means that with some creativity, you can have a bunch of different kinds of trolls that have experienced some sort of trauma that would kill anything else. Dire trolls are the result of trolls eating one another. These powerful trolls have multiple strong claws with which they can swipe at everyone around them, dealing a ton of damage. The dire Fire Troll has a CR 13 stat block in Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes. Kirin are celestials that often appear in forms like this. They're fairly rare on the material plane, but when seen by mortals, they're taken as omens of great fortune. They generally stay aloof, often layering up on mountaintops where they're attended to by devoted monks and other worshippers. They're agents of good and can serve as a celestial warlock patron. They're also 18th level spellcasters armed with cleric spells like True Resurrection, Control Weather, and Plane Shift. They make powerful allies and patrons. The Kiren has a CR 12 stat block in Volo's Guide. You know I like my kitty cats, so I'm happy to see another tabaxi included in this set. I'm always glad to see when WizKids gives us more rare races and class combinations like this instead of another elf ranger or similar. Tabaxi, with their high dexterity bonuses, make excellent dexterity-based fighters. There's also a stat block for a CR1 tabaxi hunter in Tomb of Annihilation. I know many of you are like me and enjoy the Modrons, which are essentially sentient, absolutely lawful and logical robots who have a hive-like hierarchy of increasing complexity. There are 14 types in all, and as the name implies, the Tri-Drones are the third rank up and tend to lead squads of duo and mono drones into battle. A Tri-Drone appears in Out of the Abyss and Acquisitions Incorporated. The Tridrone has a CR1 half stat block in the Monster Manual. 
And with the Tri-Drone, we now have a full collection of base Modron, those from tiers 1 to 5. Hopefully we'll see some High Arc Modron minis in the future, though we'll probably have to wait until Wizards provides a 5e stat block for them. You'll often find the lascivious incubi and succubi scurrying around the lower planes in service to more powerful entities. They're perfect beings to send out to the material plane to seduce mortals into evil acts. One thing to note is that any female succubus can become a male incubus and vice versa. They have the ability to charm enemies who then follow their commands. And if they kiss a charmed creature, well, let's just say that it hurts. An Incubus appears in Infernal War Machine Rebuild out of the Abyss and Eberron Rising from the Last War. The Incubus has a CR4 stat block in the basic rules. Love my hags. Green hags often inhabit old forests and swamps and live in caves. Like all hags, they're not overly powerful in and of themselves, but have a great ability to manipulate others into committing great evil through deception. They can change their appearance, turn invisible, and mimic the voice of others. They live to bring tragedy to others. This one is based on the art from the Monster Manual and is quite an update to the green hag mini from the Tyranny of Dragons set many years ago. The green hag has a CR3 stat block in the basic rules. A green hag appears in Infernal War Machine Rebuild. This is a highlight mini in the set for a variety of reasons. First, it's just a big, impressive, and heavy mini. And second, it's a giant snail with five flail tentacles and an iridescent anti-magic shell that can be crafted into some magical items like a robe of scintillating colors and a spell guard shield. This creature just has everything. A flail snail appears in Tomb of Annihilation and Storm Lord's Wrath. It has a CR3 stat block in Volo's Guide. The magical items appear in the basic rules. The Slotty were inadvertently created by Primus, the overlord of the Modron. While the Modron are beings of pure law, the Slotty were spawned out of chaos. In the Plain of Limbo, they wiped the Modrons out entirely. There are a variety of Slotty. Green ones are intelligent casters with spells like Fireball, Fear, and Invisibility. Later in life, they can transform themselves into the more powerful Gray Slotty, which have minis in Monster Menagerie 3. A Green Slot has a CR 8 stat block in the Monster Manual. A Green Slot appears in Dungeon of the Mad Mage and our very own Kill Ball, which you can check out at gallantgoblin.com slash killball. Gas spores are great creatures if you want to misdirect and scare the crap out of your adventuring party. From a distance, they resemble beholders, and they often spawn from the corpses of beholders or other creatures in the Underdark where their aberrant fungus grows. They're much less powerful than a beholder, but being basically balloons filled with poisonous gas, you probably don't want to be near one when it bursts. A gas spore appears in Dungeon of the Mad Mage and Out of the Abyss. It's CR1 half stat block is in the monster manual. Abolis are powerfully psychic creatures with legendary actions, layer, and regional effects. They can enslave the minds of creatures nearby and can inflict a disease on foes that makes them wither and die unless they're exposed to water constantly. An Abolith appears in Dungeon of the Mad Mage, Tomb of Annihilation, Princes of the Apocalypse, and Ghosts of Saltmarsh. It has a CR10 stat block in the basic rules. This is an unusual addition to the set, as WizKids doesn't generally include creatures that don't have official D&D stat blocks, but here we are. In the Icewind Dale set, we got a fantastic Frost Giant Skeleton, and here's a companion mini that should be a lot of fun to spring on your players. While there's no specific stat block for a Fire Giant Skeleton, there is a generic CR7 Giant Skeleton stat block in Tomb of Horrors. You can also use a Frost Giant Skeleton stat block from Icewind Dale to help craft your own Fire Giant Skeleton stat block. WizKids has been increasing the size of the minis for their dragons this year, and I'm all for it. Dragons should be the most impressive and frightening creatures most adventurers have to face. The young blue dragon has a large stat block, but this mini comes on a huge base to make it more stable on the table. An outline is provided on the base to remind you of the proper gameplay size of the creature. Blue dragons are native to the desert and have lightning breath. The young blue dragon has a CR9 stat block in the basic rules. 
Our other young dragon in the set is the fire-breathing red dragon. Red dragons live in the mountains or hills, sometimes forging out their lairs from abandoned dwarven strongholds. They have an affinity for fire, so you'll even find them deep within volcanoes, making it a treacherous journey for heroes to even get to their lairs. A young red dragon has a CR 10 stat block in the basic rules. Our capstone mini this time is this amazing looking Nightwalker. He's not only the most impressive mini in the set, but he's also the strongest foe. Nightwalkers spawn from the negative plane, which abuts the Shadowfell. When evil creatures get a little too close to the negative plane, they are sometimes drawn inside and replaced with these huge and impossibly tall undead creatures who want nothing more than to extinguish all life. Even being near one can cause your cells to die and the Nightwalker to more easily finish you off. And there's no coming back from the death that a Nightwalker brings outside of a wish spell. The Nightwalker has a CR 20 stat block in Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes. Many WizKids mini sets these days include warbands, or a variety of figures that go together, like the City Watch agents in City of Lost Omens. Well, this set includes a little warband of kobolds, and here's the whole set we pulled out of our case. Your numbers will likely vary a bit, but you should receive enough to fill out a decent sized warren. Overall, this is a solid set of minis that should fill in some holes in your collection. We finally got that elusive tri-drone to polish off our base modern collection. We added another figure to our Yuan-Ti, Genie, and Troll sets. We also got a full collection of base elementals. One interesting thing about this set is that quite a few of the minis included are based on the same basic design as some of the Nolzer's Marvelous Unpainted Miniatures, but they've generally been reposed. We didn't call out every single instance of this, but it is noteworthy. One nice thing about this is that if you want, say, more kobolds, and I always want more kobolds, I can pick up the two sets of Nolzer's kobolds, and those minis will be unique from these despite being based on the same overall design. For common creatures like kobolds who travel in packs, I think that's fantastic. It probably makes it easier for WizKids to produce the minis, and it lets us get a nice variety of figures. The set also includes some good, relatively obscure PC minis, and some great general purpose creatures like the Ambush Drake, the Mule, and the Bloody Giant Wolf Spider. And you've got fun creatures like the Al Mirage, the Boggle, and the Mimic. And you've got those great minis that are just showcases, those that'll make your players gasp when they hit the table, like the T-Rex, the Dire Troll, the Flail Snail, the Kirin, and the Dragons. You've also got some great big bads, like the Nightwalker, the Anathema, and the Fire Giant Skeleton. But for me, I love those minis that you can craft great stories around. For me, in this set, that would be the Barbalang, the Merid, the Green Hag, the Kirin, the Aboleth, and maybe even the Skeletal Alchemist. I always like to let you know if anything arrived broken or bent, and this time we had great results. Nothing was broken or off its base. Only a handful had some slight bending, but it wasn't even anything worth mentioning. Since there weren't many variants in this set, you get more unique sculpts than usual. Though for the first time, there was an uncommon we only got one of in a case, and that was the water elemental down, down there for us. Generally, you get at least two of every uncommon common, but now it seems possible to get only one. That seems to be the result of them including more large uncommons than they used to. You'll notice that the sets now include 45 total minis rather than 44, and that extra one is an additional large uncommon. Finally, some may disagree with what minis were chosen to be commons, uncommons, and rares. For me, I would have preferred maybe to see more tri-drones and incubuses, maybe make them uncommons instead of rares, but honestly, nothing really major jumped out at me in this area. And it does seem like this set is selling for a bit cheaper than the last set Icewind Dale Rhyme of the Frostmaiden did. Prices around booster boxes and bricks and cases will vary significantly across retailers, so I definitely recommend shopping around and checking with your local game shop about possible pre-order discounts and bonuses. We've already reviewed the premium figure that came with this set, the classic D&D monster known as the Purple Worm. You can check out that review by clicking that little eye in the corner of your screen. And we want to thank WizKids again for sending us this case to review with you. It's the first time we've been able to do a full case review prior to release, so we're really grateful for them for giving us that opportunity. We very much hope to be able to do that again in the future as well, and we hope this informs your purchasing
purchasing decisions. If you have any questions about the Booster Box system, be sure to check out that FAQ at the link in the video description below. Any other questions, leave them for me in the comment section down there. And don't forget to enter the giveaway by being a subscriber to the Gallant Goblin and leaving me a comment down there, letting me know which of the minis from this set you'd like to see us feature in a future Fight Your Mini supplement. And check out our Snowy Owlbear supplement at gallantgoblin.com slash snowy owlbear. Many thanks also to our two sponsors for this video. First, the Roll for Combat Actual Play podcast and their new Agents of Edgewatch adventure. I was just listening to it today and appreciating how good all the little details were, like the professional narration, the spot on music, and the sound effects. And it's just a great little story with compelling characters. They left last week in a bit of a cliffhanger. And I'm going to let you in on a little bit of a secret. I had a little chat with the GM Stephen Glicker about the current campaign campaign, and it sounds like the players are going to be learning some hard lessons about how tough Pathfinder 2E can be in the next couple of episodes. So tune in with me to find out at RollForCombat.com. Next, we want to thank our longtime sponsor, the Deca Mini, and their Big Bad Booklet series. Each monthly booklet gives you everything you need to run a short adventure centered around a certain Big Bad with stat blocks, story hooks, layer information, role-playing guides, new NPCs, magic items, minions, and much more. And if you're subscribed like I am, let me know down in the comments down there which of the Big Bad booklets has been your favorite so far. I'm still all about King Blurk back there, but this month, come meet Gix, a giant vulture who collects the bones of fallen heroes. Will your skeleton end up in his sprawling ossuary? Find out at BigBadBooklet.com. You know, recently I asked you all what I could do as little Patreon perks to thank people for supporting us, and maybe I can run some folks through some of the new Big Bad Booklets each month. What do you think? And don't forget to sign up for the RPG Writer Workshop. They're kicking it off on November 1st, so you want to make sure you get registered by then. Both Grady and I have participated and had a great time. You really do learn a lot. So if you're interested in writing your own RPG or D&D supplements and publishing them, go check it out today at RPGWriterWorkshop.com. Well, for now, thank you for watching today, especially if you made it all the way to the end with me here. Soon we'll be diving into those unpainted minis from Nolzer's Wave 13, including the new Magic the Gathering minis. Apparently some of those broke some lore news to even hardcore Magic fans. We'll discuss all that in the video. I have them all right down there. I need to go through them. Um, but for now, be, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss anything, and click the little bell icon if you'd like to be one of the first people to see when we drop a new video. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, where we give you all the latest TTRPG news, previews of what we're working on, and occasional pictures with us, with our cats, and our Yeti tykes. Otherwise, stay safe, have fun, love each other, and I'll see you next time at the Gallant Goblin. <laughs>